Twitter handle, you can follow me. Um, I'm part of a small team in Africa, um, and we basically help clients directly in different phases of the projects. So we sometimes we provide some architecture guidance. That's most of my work as, a, as an architect in Africa. Uh, we help clients understanding what Drupal can do, what Drupal cannot do, and how we can do things in Drupal, basically. Um, and some other times, uh, we work with clients that already have websites in Drupal and do have some, some type of problems in terms of security, in terms of performance. Um, so most of my presentation is going to be based on uh, the work that we usually do in performance assessments. Okay? Um, so basically clients call us and they do have a performance problem or they think that they do have a performance problem or they are going to have a certain traffic that they are expecting and they want to make sure um, that they, they will handle it. Okay? And this talk is, is mostly about understanding understanding Drupal websites, understanding your site. What are the limits? What are the numbers? Um, and what are the main problems? And make it faster with the same resources. Okay? It's not really about uh, making the website faster by increasing the infrastructure or changing the infrastructure or um, install some sort of caching. Okay? It's mostly like understanding what you're doing in your website, what are you doing in every page that you are running on your website, and why is it slow? Why, how can it be faster? Maybe? Okay. So the story usually starts like this. My site is slow, right? Have you ever had a client that called you and said the site is slow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone. So usually they call us and they say my site is slow, but usually there's already some uh, debugging that has been done or some ideas that already are on the table, things like, well, we already had five more web servers, um, we had Nginx, we changed the MySQL version, we had a memcache, we are thinking about having more MySQL slaves, uh, we need more granularity in the slow query loss, we are sure that the problem is in some of the versions of the stack that we are using, and we are try we try to patch boost or varnish or memcache or cache route or whatever, and it's probably going to solve the problem. Sometimes even worse. Sometimes it's, it's things like we need to rebuild the site from scratch. <coughs> um, we need to basically export the website to pure HTML because we cannot never handle this traffic with a CMS like Drupal. We need to cache the whole site, so we need to find out a really strange strategy to cache the whole site, even for authenticated users. Uh, we can't handle this traffic uh, with Drupal. So it's this always like. A lot of a lot of reasoning done before having the most important thing that is understanding what you mean with <coughs> why, why is a website slow? Is because um, the service that your web service where your website depends on are slow. Things like a database is slow or a web service is slow, and then as you are depending on that service, your site is also slow. Um, 
Or is because what you are trying to do in every page load is incredibly complex and that's the reason why it's slow. So it's going to be always slow while you are doing that get the amount of operations in every page load. Um, or maybe the, the servers that you have are not correctly sized for the type of track that you have. So you basically said, well, my infrastructure handles 150 requests per second. You are getting 300, so you have a problem. Or you said, well, my infrastructure handles 150 requests per second, but my, my requests are taking 10 seconds each, so your infrastructure is not able to handle all that traffic, basically. There can also be problems in, in the front end. Like sometimes you might, you might have too many or too large access, or you have a slow connection between the servers and the clients, or it can even be things like the JavaScript is taking too much time to render, basically. Okay? So the first thing that you need always to understand is um, what you mean by slow. And then, the next step is, as you guys are men and women of science, what you should give based your opinions are is in facts, in data. Okay? So basically the first thing that you need when you start working in a performance problem is data. Okay? Data to basically do two basic things. The first one is know what's your current situation and when you start changing stuff, what's your next situation. So you can compare. And you can, have, you can say, I was here and now I am here. Okay? The second one is data to understand um, what is the problem. So basically that can give you hints to understand if the problem is in, is in Drupal, is in PHP, is in MySQL, is in, uh, is, is in a, a layer of Drupal that's not working. Um, and after that, after, after you have data, and after you have your measurements, then you can start implementing your changes, and then you can measure again and understand if you are improving or not. Okay? So several times, people just having uh, performance solution that in reality were basically slowing down even instead of instead of um, instead of helping clients. So what kind of data can you get? So the most important thing you want to understand is how much time are you, are your page taking? Okay. And one 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 really simple way that you have is well if you if you load the rendering times in Apache or in your web server basically you know how much page how much time does it take? Okay? And you can understand which ones are the slowest ones, okay? Sometimes can even be can even be simple, right? If you are using the statistics model, it saves the rendering time for every page. So you know how much time does it take, okay? Sometimes you don't have, um, you sometimes don't have this data from clients, and it's, it's worse. Um, another tool that we use a lot of times in, in Acquia is, um, is a tool called newrally.com. I don't know if you ever had, anyone has experience with it. It's a great tool. What it does basically is samples the request that you do to the server, um, understand and, and saves that profiling information to send back to newrelic.com, and then gives you the ability to, in their website, to uh, to analyze what's the what's the performance over time, and then click on a certain instance and understand what was the problem in instance. Okay. Sometimes you might have problems like um, the client is is seeing the same traffic, but the website suddenly is much slower. And then you can you can click on it on the feed, and you can understand where is it spending time, so you can get it by function time. What's the, where's the problem? Okay. And there are other tools that can also be uh, can also be simpler to understand how much time the site is taking. Like Google Analytics provides also a sample of um, the time that your your uh, your your pages are taking to uh, to load. Okay. So if you if you are in the website test our performance problems and at a certain time you fix it, is, then you have a confirmation. Okay? To understand what the real website is doing, the best way that you have is profiling it. Okay? That's what will give you an idea of how much time are you spending in each function, how many times are we calling those functions. So XHProf um, is mostly what we use. Um, there's a really good integration with Drupal both in D6, both in D7. And D7 is a bit, is a bit better, the XHProf model is really good out of the box and it's usable. Um, there's another tool um, called SHProf Lee, which you can get uh, from uh, the GitHub of Mark Sonnenbaum. What it basically does is aggregates XHProf uh, reports. So imagine why, um, so you want to understand what's the problem on several pages, but in, instead of looking to each of them individually, you can actually click around on your website, it generates whatever reports, and then you can aggregate all of them. And that's what the tool does. Okay? So, does anyone have the experience 
profiling with Xbox Pro. Yeah. So when you when you when you start using, that's the kind of data that will give you. Okay. Um, and this one is from this one is from ag aggregation. Okay. So it will tell you how much time you spend in CPU, how much time you spend waiting for I/O, um, <coughs> how much memory you use totally, and the number of function calls. Okay. So you can either have um, this information by page or in total. Basically. So, what you what the data that you are looking for is basically first understanding what's the average and in individual page load time. So you basically want to understand what's the average and if you have peaks, where are the peaks? What are the differences? So imagine like uh, all your pages take one second to load, but when I search for some some item in the website, it takes thirty seconds. Okay. Um, I want to understand memory consumption. So how much memory I'm, I'm consuming every time that I am requesting a page to Drupal. Um, I want to basically identify problematic pages. So from the comparison of average and individual, I want to understand <coughs> which ones are the problem, where are the problems. And this is a really important one when you are talking about uh, a web application. It's understanding how much time are you consuming in CPU versus time waiting for inputs like a database or a web service or something like that. And then, when you start having this data, then you can tell, you can go deeper and understand in each page what are really the problems. So, if it's a view, it's a block, it's you are calling too many functions. What's the problem? So, usually, where I, what I do is I follow this this method. I I look to the data that I have and I try to identify from that data what would be the problems. And then I also start by the easy ones. Like if I if I if I try to debug a 404 page in Drupal. That's probably like the fastest page you can have in a Drupal website because it's just rendering <coughs> a function call and it's not rendering all the blocks, it's not rendering things that you would have on the home page or the node view page. So it's the simplest page that you can get. The thing to have is okay, you have the data, but you need to compare the data that you have with the data that you think is good. Okay? And in, in this case, it's, it's, it's really interesting that you are using Drupal because, well, there's like one million, two million websites in Drupal. So, the performance of a Drupal site is something that can be measured and can be compared with other sites. Okay, so usually what I look is I want to have an average between one one and a half seconds and thirty to uh, to six six mega sixty mega of, uh, of memory consumed, and usually you would see things like one hundred to three hundred pages per page. Okay, this is just average. Okay, there are the, if the page is really complex, it's going to be much 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 more. If it's the page will be simple, it's going to be much less. Okay? But if I start seeing numbers above those numbers, I start to be worried. Um, and the other thing that is important when you, you start measuring is making sure that you are measuring with um, a real world situation. So you don't want to measure your pages with the user ID number one. Because that one does not do access check, for instance. You don't check permissions for the user one, right? So it's going to be always faster when you are checking um, permissions. At the same time, Maybe the user one you have admin menu in every page load, and admin <coughs> menu, you know what? Admin menu is that menu that has on the top that allows you to have a drop down, and it's usually heavy. So if that's 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 data that you want to want to use because the situation where the user ID one is browsing the site, is, it's not that often. Like most of the times, our normal users are using the site, not the user ID one. So other tools that. It might be it might be interesting to uh, to install when you start uh, when you start uh, debugging your the performance of your site. Develop is a, is a good one to start. It's really basic. Basically, tells you how much time it took and how much memory it took in every page um, in every page request in the in the footer of your page to show um, the number of um, the number of the, the the amount of seconds and the, the amount of memory that you consume. Um, SHProf. There's a similar thing has in the in the footer of the site has a little link to uh, exit prop report and when you click on it you can start analyzing it. And then sometimes when you are using SH prop for instance, um, in Drupal you have a lot of functions that are really hard to debug, like the sim function or you get the call user func or functions that are, are really generic. What's really important is not the function name, it's actually the arguments that you are calling the function with. Okay? And for those things sometimes it's I, I like to use timer start and timer read. To uh, Drupal function, uh, to Drupal API function <coughs> that allow you to measure how much time did you spend since since you start the timer until you're ready. Okay. So 
Um, what are usually the problems that we find? And I, I identified like a couple of them just, just to discuss here, okay? So, <coughs> typical one number one is, is things like a slow query. So, <coughs> if you look to Devel and if you look to XHProf reports that you have there, you basically see that the number of queries is, is reasonable, right? I said 100 to 150, so I have 100, four, it's nice, okay? Um, but the query time, is, is incredibly high, okay? So it's like almost five seconds. And you can, you can see here um, that the CPU time is reasonable, like one <coughs> and a half seconds, that's nice. But uh, the wall time, that means the time that my CPU is waiting for input, so typically a database, is really high, okay? So the problem on the side here is there's a, there's, there's a query, or there are several queries that are really slow. And as you see that the number is low, I'll probably bet that the problem is a single or two single queries, okay? Um, this is especially bad if this page it tends to be uh, a home page, for instance, okay? And usually <coughs> these cases are not, are not isolated. Like, we see a page like this, usually they're present in more situations on the website. Um, and there, there are several reasons why you could have those type of slow queries. Assuming that you didn't create the query yourself and you are using a view, sometimes you can be a bit nasty on those <coughs> queries. So a lot of joins and you are indexing on you are you are joining on something that is not indexed. So at that point it's slow. Some other times, um, and this is something that is particular to uh, <coughs> IMDB, if we are doing a count in a large table in IMDB, it's slow. Okay? Um, do you know where do you always do a count in most situations in Drupal? When you start, when you when you want to have some some sort of operation that mostly involves accounts, usually it's on pages. So whenever you do a page or a full page or in a view, it's it's a count that is behind it. So if you have a big table, let's say you have half a million nodes, that can be slow. Okay. So there are there are models that you can use to um, to avoid the count, especially like imagine that you are in the home page and you want to have some sort of pager. If you're on the home page, you probably don't need the number of pages that you have with that data. So you probably, if you have something like next and previous, that's enough. You don't need one, two, three, four, five, next, right? So if you use a views like pager, for instance, is a model that allows you to have just a previous and next a pager, and you don't need to do the count, okay? And there are more models that does the same thing. The next problem. <laughs> I call it, usually the people don't identify that as a problem. They, they look to the query log and say, that seems fine, I don't have any slow queries. Um, so usually we look to the, the develop and the XH report, like, um, <coughs> you have a high query time, but you also have a high query number. Okay? So in reality, what's probably happening is that you have a high number of queries. <coughs> Okay, so um, the number of queries I said, well, let's say 100 to 300 or 100 to 200, and you have 640 for each page request. That's incredible. That's, an, that's a really high number of queries for a normal page. And you also have, which is normally associated with high memory consumption. So that basically means that you are getting a lot of data from your database or from your web service, from somewhere. You are getting a lot of data, and you are, you are storing that, that, that data in, uh, in memory. And that's the reason why it's so slow, because you need to wait for all the time that you are getting the data. And then probably means that if you are getting all that data, you are doing something with it as well. So you are spending time processing that data in your application as well, okay? So usually, this problem is due to big menus with, uh, with a lot of menu items. Um, page that contains um, items that are, are always loading and they shouldn't be loading, like uh, a menu that is rendered, or several menus that are rendered in every page load and then you are not showing them. Um, and nodes or users or some sort of entity that you are, you are loading on the website um, and then you are not really doing anything special with that. Okay? So something like this, I, I found this in a, this is a real example actually. Um, so imagine like you were searching SOAR for instance, 
and you, you wanted to customize the, the, <coughs> each item that you get from search. You want to add, you, know, you want to get some information that was not present in Solver, so <coughs> you basically need to do a node load. So basically they are doing a node load in every render of each item that you get from Solver. Okay? So if you end up looking to the number of queries, it's going to be huge. And if you look to the memory consumption, it's huge as well. And then if they are, if they are unlucky and the search is actually a really used functionality on their website, then they are in a bit, they're, they're in trouble, basically. We also see a lot of things, uh, a lot of times, things that are, um, they seem kind of isolated, but in reality they are not isolated. So, so things like this, like, in the last Christmas, uh, we needed a way to add uh, a Christmas tree um, to the website, for instance, and people said, "Well, I just need to add some information to my user to my user uh, profile, and uh, is that going to go run only during Christmas?" So there's several errors here. First is, well, you are doing a user save in a hook in it, for instance, and the second is, well, we thought that this is going to happen only during in the Christmas time, but someone forgot in the web and still doing it. And we see a lot of times code that is there, people that forgot that that code was there. And that code is running all the time. And he's doing some nasty things like this. Doing writes to the database, like node saves, or user saves, or variable sets, and things like that, in every page request. Okay? So people think that it's an isolated situation, but in reality it's not. It's something that is happening all the time. Or, or things like this, like, I have a web service, the web service is really slow, and in a in, in my footer, I basically call the web service all the time. So if the web service goes down, our web service is going to go down. Okay. So in in the in, in more in, in more subjects that are associated with this topic, you can find things like blocks rendered that are not shown. That happens a lot of times. I see a lot of clients like they had that block and the block was it was due to sh to show in the home page, and then they they, they they hide the block in the all the remaining pages via a template. In reality, the, the block is being rendered. So if the block is being defined to be rendered in every page, it will be rendered in every page. So just the fact that you are hiding it via a template or uh, via preprocess or something like that, the block is there still. So make sure that you are only rendering what you really need in every page, OK? Um, the, same, the same thing with menus. We see a lot of people with large menus and rendering a lot of menus in, in, in every situation that they don't really need. And, and then there's still other situations like this, like you are doing a theme rebuild or you are clearing the cache all the time um, just because you forgot some option or because um, you, you forgot that uh, something was activated. And that code then takes up is hidden in other pages. Okay? <coughs> Typical four is um, something like they call the missy killer. It's basically like, so the ones that run is usually normal. But in some situations, you did some process that will inject data or will consume data from the site, and it's incredibly slow and basically um, puts the website down. Okay? So things like synchronization of thousands of nodes that happen from time to time, uh, synchronization of the Active Directory uh, user data that you are injecting all the users every night. Um, and sometimes we even see these, this process or this synchronization process being called directly from uh, front end page. So, like, I need this information on this page, so I will, if I don't have the information, I will synchronize it myself instead of doing that via a Drush script or a back end task or something like that. Okay? And um, the last one that I have uh, is, is something that is, that, that's the hardest that's happening. It's, it's really a stupid question that you are spending. Like, if you look at this example, um, this example is from uh, XHProf, it basically uh, sorts. Um, by percentage, the, the amount of time that you are spending in, in every function. It's not starting in the, in the beginning, okay? But I mean, I'm in the function that spends from 18 to 16%. Uh, and you see that uh, just the Google Analytics footer, it takes 18%. The Google Analytics is basically having some JavaScript to the page, in the end of every page. There is no reason why you need to, to spend 18% of the time, it's almost like one fifth of the render of your time in Google Analytics. Okay? And the reason that they were doing this is because they were using some tokens and the token has uh, had some problems and they were basically doing node loads in every page instead of they needed. Okay? 
So make sure that the function that you have in the top, in the top 20, in the top 50 of the XH Prof report, make sure that they make sense to be there. And there are some that you completely obvious that they should not be there. Okay? So solutions for these problems. First one is always reduce complexity. Okay? Just you want to make sure that your website is as slim as possible. Okay? Before before trying to improve it anyway, just make sure that you, everything that you are doing on every page request is really needed. Uh, after that, if there is nothing that you can do to optimize the render time of your pages, then you can start caching it. Okay? And you can cache it basically where you can at L levels. And you need to maintain that cache as as much time as possible. Okay? So make sure that when you are saving cache, make sure that you just expire it when you really need it. Putting things in cache is incredibly simple. Removing things from cache is incredibly hard. Okay? So that make make sure that when you put some things in cache, they can live there as, as long as possible. Um, and then it's basically trying to understand if you have heavy tasks on the site, make sure that when they make sense to be run and in which situations they need to be run. So if they can be run from a direct script or from a backend script, run it that way. It's easier. In terms of cache, um, there's there's several layers of, of caching that you can do. You can either say, well, all my pages are similar to everyone that visits my website, so I can 